And welcome back to Hoopsville, everybody. Normally, this is a live show on the second week and the second Thursday of the basketball season. Of course, this is technically the first Thursday of the season. Um, but due to conflicts, we are actually taping it, as you may have already uh, figured out so far in this one. Um, but you can still interact with us. Feel free on Twitter at D3 Hoopsville or the hashtag Hoopsville. Uh, we certainly encourage you using the hashtag Hoopsville. Also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Hoopsville. Email us at Hoopsville at D3Hoops.com. That is Hoopsville at D3Hoops.com. Those are the three great ways to interact with us. Um, normally in a live show, we'd have the chat room, but obviously that is not in play today either. But please feel free to uh, interact. We would love to hear from you uh, throughout the season. If you have guest ideas or you have teams you think we should be focusing on, especially when we restart our, u- our annual School of the Week, program, please share them with us via Twitter, Facebook, or on um, email. And of course, tell your friends, your fans uh, that you know, other coaches, players, etc. The more the merrier here on the Hoopsville family. We're going to switch gears here and jump in and talk about women's basketball. And there's a couple great stories going on in women's basketball, um, it was pr- especially considering we've gotten a, a few big high-profile transfers, as it were, from Division One programs, and they have varying reasons for that. And we'll talk to both of them today uh, on the show. And the first one up uh, at bat, as it were, is uh, Sydney Moss from uh, Thomas Moore, the sophomore forward guard, joins us on the Hoopsville Hotline. Uh, first and foremost, thanks for joining us on Hoopsville. Thank you for having me. Um, let's talk about the fact that uh, you transferred in from Florida, uh, where you played, I, I believe, last year, if, if memory serves. Um, uh, first, I got to ask, what was the reason from transferring from a Division One quote unquote power in Florida uh, to Thomas Moore in, in Ohio? Um, you know, it was kind of just uh, a family thing and a personal thing, but um, mostly family. You know, my grandpa um, got sick and ended up passing away, and it was just hard, you know, being down there so far away from my family. Um, you know, and Thomas Moore was a lot closer and, uh, I knew I didn't really want to go to a D, another D1 school just um, because I didn't want to sit out a year. I just, you know, wanted to keep keep being on the court. And um, I don't know, I feel like, you know, D1, it's more of a job, you mm-hmm. know. And I, I, I wanted to be somewhere and relax and play and have a little bit more fun. So. Of course, well, of course, your hometown's West Virginia. You went to high school in Kentucky. Uh, there's that great little cross rival or cross border type stuff. And of course, you're in school now in Ohio after taking the trip to Florida. So you're certainly back home, as it were. And I assume everything you have settled in, as it were. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I, I love it here a lot. Um, you know, the smaller classrooms. Um, you know, I have a lot of family friends and friends up here. And they can come and watch me play, unlike uh, being so far away down in Florida. Sure. So. Uh, and as you said, it's it's not a job. You really are a student athlete. It's something that we certainly preach and and um, not preach. It's not the right term, but we certainly push <laughs> forward as as being the being the thing that we all appreciate about Division Three. Have you settled into more of the student athlete role and and more of the of the basketball being something you can enjoy and not be a job? Right. Yeah. Um, you know, just just being in the smaller classrooms, you know, I actually interact with my teachers. Unlike Florida, I had to, you know, email them and they have to get back to me, you know, the next day mm. or within a week. And you know, here I can actually talk, you know, face to face with my with my professors. And um, on top of that, you know, the classrooms are smaller, so I get a little bit more of um, that one on one with my professors and you know other students and stuff like that. Well, and you've made an impact right away for the eighth-ranked Saints in the latest in the preseason D three hoops dot poll dot com poll. We should mention, um, and not not too bad, averaging a double double in the first <laughs> weekend. Uh, I think I think your presence is known. I think people know what's going on. Um, did you anticipate having that kind of impact right off the bat? You know, I just wanted to come in and play, and you know, make the players around me better. You know, I don't I don't want to come in here and average you know fifty points and. Three rebounds, you know. I just, I just wanted to, you know, a win is a win, and whether I, you know, contribute off the bench, uh, you know, giving people water, giving people towels, you know. However, just as long as we get the win, so. Of course, Thomas Moore finished the last year 21st ranked. It's a team that's always in the conversation in women's basketball. Mm-hmm. Uh, against Wittenberg, you put up 19 points, 12 rebounds, and then followed with a 24 points game high and 10 rebounds in the championship game of the uh, of the the Wilmington College's uh, tip-off tournament uh, mm-hmm. in the win against Wilmington. 
Um, you, you mentioned you just want to contribute in many ways. I'm sure you know at Florida you, you had different ways of contributing. Is, is it throwing your teammates off a little bit, or, or, or have they welcomed you with open arms? It's not every day a Division three student can sit there and say a Division one transfer just came to join them on the team. Right. Um, I knew a lot of the players um, before I even, you know, went down to Florida. I knew, you know, Sidney Wayne got off the team, Devin Beasley, um, one of the assistant coaches, Jerry Allen. He was actually my AAU coach back in, I think, eighth grade, mm-hmm. freshman year of high school. So, um, you know, I knew a few of the players. And then coming in, you know, they all just, you know, opened their arms and welcomed me in, coaches, um, players, you know, staff and uh athletic trainers, you know, stuff like that. So, Let's talk a little bit about the, the makeup of this team. There's three seniors on the squad, and, and Katie Kitchen, uh, also uh, Devin Beasley, and, of course, Mariah Corey. Uh, and then there's a whole host. The rest are pretty much all underclassmen, not a lot of juniors either on this squad. So, really, it's, it's, a, it's a wide, you know, a young team as it were, but somewhat experienced. How's the team looking this season? How do, how do you guys feel about the upcoming season? You know, I think I think it's going to be a great season. Um, you know, we we come in every day and practice and work hard and push each other. Um, the upperclassmen push the lower classmen. The lower cra- classmen, you know, push the upperclassmen. So, well, it's certainly for, uh, fun so far to watch it. Named uh, uh, Penn Atlanta or Penn Atlantic, yeah, President's Athletic Conference Player of the Week in the first week. Uh, I suspect we'll see your name on that list. Several other times, uh, some people might be looking at the name or already know your background with the last name of Moss. Uh, your father is uh, the, the the famed wide receiver Randy Moss. Uh, I'm sure that that comes with a little bit of pressure, or or in some cases comes with a little bit of expectations. Yeah, um, I think you know I've been dealing with that my whole life. Yeah. I you know picked up a basketball back in you know seventh seventh grade. So um, you know he kind of just told me to. I don't know, you know, I'm going to have higher expectations than everybody else just because of my last name. So I have to live up to that a little bit. And it certainly, would, would, is that kind of something that led you down the D1 road? Is that something that kind of just kind of opened up those doors? Um, You know, yes and no. I, I, I don't even know what grade I was in, but I started getting, you know, college letters and stuff. And the first one, you know, I got was from D1, and I never thought, to, you know, look at D2 or D3 or even NAIA, you know, so. And quickly, before we go back to to transferring to Division Three, we should also warn anybody who's expecting you to show up in their gym or at your home court. It's not like your father's showing up to all the games. There's not going to be some big, you know, notoriety and celebrity stuff going on. This is about you. Right, right. Uh, you know, I just kind of want to make a name for myself and not live behind my dad's, you know, legacy in football or his you know big name i kind of want to be known as sydney moss instead of you know randy moss's daughter so. sure uh you we, you touched on a little bit there the d1 door kind of opened up when you got the mailings and you really even considered division two and division three but when you transferred back you also talked about the fact you really weren't that interested in division one so what attracted you to thomas moore what attracted you to division three besides the student athlete aspect of, of wanting you know maybe smaller classrooms and such but i mean what was kind of like, hey, you know, Thomas Moore is a good choice. Um, I knew I kind of wanted to come in the, you know, northern Kentucky area just because, you know, I, I graduated high school for, from here and I went to middle school here and I, you know, lived here for seven years. So I knew it wasn't too far away from where I'm at in West Virginia, where my family's at, but yeah. it's not too far away or too close, you know. So um, then, then, you know, so I narrowed it down. To I, I only want to be, you know, two, two and a half hours away from home. And then uh, I'm real, really familiar and I have a lot of, you know, family, friends and people around that, you know, care for me and love me around here. And then uh, I knew I didn't want to go D1 because I didn't want to, th- want to have to sit out a year. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's something to consider too. You lose a year of your uh, of your uh, prime, as it were. Should mention right. earlier, I mentioned Thomas Moore in Ohio. That obviously erroneously, uh, <laughs> certainly not in Ohio, in Kentucky, uh, but close yeah. enough, as it were. Yeah. Um, how much though did you know about Division Three? How much did you know about Thomas Moore? How much did you know about their opponents and what to expect from a team that's usually ranked in the top twenty-five? Yeah, um, you know. I didn't really know that much, and then, um, you know, Sydney Wayne Scott, while I was down at Florida, um, she, uh, 
I saw that she transferred from Pikeville to come back to Thomas More, and I was like, hmm, you know, I haven't really looked into it. And then I kind of just followed her and was seeing how the team was going and stuff because we've been friends since middle school, you mm. know. So um, I just kind of looked into that, and then I, uh, she said, you know, I talked to her whenever I came back for summer, um, leaving Florida this past year, and she was saying, you know, how great the program is and how uh, great the coach is and the head coach is and stuff like that. So, um I don't know. I mean, I just I, – I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Um, what about the season ahead? How much do you know about your opponents? Chicago is always a, a tough team. Um, in the PAC, the team swept it last year, uh, obviously, but there are some tough opponents in there. So how much do you know about that? Or, or furthermore, how much do you not care about that? Um, you know, you always got to kind of care. At, uh, you know, you got to respect all your opponents whether, you know, they have a, you know, winning season or a losing season last year because you never know what they're going to bring to the table, especially because, you know, we're in the top ten or whatever, you know, we're ranked this year. So, um, you know, you always got to uh, – hmm. No, it makes sense. I mean, you you certainly want to you care about the opponent you're going to face, but you may not know about their history and such, and maybe that's not as big a factor. Right, you just got to come out on the court, and every time you first step you take onto the court, you just got to bring it your all your A game, and I don't know. Yeah, no, it, it makes sense to me. I, it, it, it's it's one of those things where every game's important, as they say, and uh, of course, averaging a double double to start the season, uh, I have a sinking suspicion we're going to see a lot out of that. Of course, you're on the road at Capital. Um, coming up here on Saturday um, before you finally guys get to play at home uh, in the uh, Julie Costello Memorial Classic against North Park and Franklin. Um, Mm -hmm. We're looking forward to seeing how the team does. Of course, that's Thanksgiving weekend. Um, As always, first and foremost, welcome to Division Three. We're going to look forward to seeing you play. Um, Gut feeling uh, tells me we're going to be talking about you just a little bit, but your team as well. Uh, and quickly, when you look at your team and the expectations you have for the team and the coaches' expectations for the team, um, what what can you share with us? Um, I think, you know, we have a lot of talent on the team, but I think we're just kind of taking it, you know, one practice at a time or one game at a time, and we're not trying to look too far ahead into the future. We're just trying to take it day by day. Uh, that is usually a, a good motto to have. Certainly, St. Thomas had a terrific season last year before finishing 27 and two on the year. Uh, well, thanks so much for joining us, Sydney. I uh, I know it's taking time out of your busy schedule with classes and and practice and all. As always, though, here on the show, we always give our guests the final word. Any final thoughts you want to share with those who may be tuning in? Um. Go Saints. <laughs> That's pretty good. Go Saints, as it is. St. Thomas Saints uh, sophomore forward slash guard, uh, Sydney Moss, joining us here on Hoopsville. Sydney, thanks so much. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Sydney Moss, once again, joining us here on Hoopsville. When we come back, we'll have plenty more to talk about, including more Division Three women's basketball transfers from Division One. We'll be back with more Hoopsville right after this.